Now, when I tried to measure this wire, the multimeter said 20 milliohms, but the vector network analyzer said 1 ohm. Is something wrong with my equipment? Hello, and welcome back. Today, I want to look at the resistance of conductors. This is a constant, of course, in direct current, but once you start analyzing it in AC, things get a bit complicated. The value becomes not just frequency dependent, but also geometry dependent. So to understand what's going on, there are two phenomena to analyze, skin effect and proximity effect. So to determine the resistance of a conductor, you need to know the area, length and resistivity of the material. And this is the basic formula that you probably already know. And this holds true, regardless of whether it's alternating or direct current. Well, under one condition. The current actually has to go through the entire area of the conductor. If for whatever reason current only passes through parts of the conductor, then the area will be smaller and thus the resistance will be larger. One phenomenon that will not allow current to pass through the entire area of the conductor is skin effect. This is described by quite a complex formula that involves a set of constants like the material's magnetic permeability and its electrical permittivity, the resistivity from before, but also a variable, which is frequency. Well, in this case, it's pulsation. But anyway, so the higher the frequency is, the smaller the skin depth will be. In other words, the current will only flow on the surface and not completely penetrate the material. In the case of copper, even though it's quite a good conductor, if you have a signal of, say, 10 megahertz, the current will only penetrate about 21 micrometers into the material. So if you have a really thick wire, it doesn't matter how low the DC resistance is, the AC resistance will be far larger. Now, when talking about round wires, first thing to observe is that skin effect will only start to matter once the wire's diameter is around twice the skin depth. So skin depth is pushing out on both sides, and when the diameter exceeds twice the skin depth, the resistance will actually start to increase. In other words, the thinner a piece of wire is, the higher the frequency up to which its resistance will stay constant before it starts to vary. So for the same frequency, a thicker wire will have a smaller resistance of course, but it will start to vary at a lower frequency. Now measuring this phenomenon is more or less difficult based on the exact equipment you have at your disposal. For today's tests, I will be using the Light VNA, which is a great product, for its specific price range. One of the problems that you might run into using this equipment is being able to measure small values of resistance when it's coupled together with a large reactive component, as is the case with a loop of wire, which has quite a large inductance. So to be able to accurately measure the resistance of the wire, I had to twist it to minimize its loop area and thus its inductance. So I took this sort of twisted wire and measured it using the two-port shunt-through measurement method. If you're curious about how this method works, I covered most of these measurement methods in a previous video, so you can check that out if you're curious. So I tested two pieces of wire, one was 0.2 millimeters in diameter, and the other was 0.5 millimeters in diameter, and this is the SMA setup that I used to be able to do the shunt-through measurement. So the wire is connected in between the two lines. Now, to be able to observe the changing resistance, as well as keep the measurement in the accurate range of the shunt-through method, I measured starting from the light VNA's minimum frequency of 50 kHz up to around 5 MHz. So in this range, the shunt impedance was below 5 ohms. So in this case, it was about 2.9. Now, finally, to get the resistance value, I processed the various data points using a spreadsheet. So starting from the S21 parameter, I extracted the impedance, and from that, the actual resistance. So everything here was done using these formulas. And finally, plotting out the data, we get these two nice curves. So in orange, we have the resistance of the 0.2 millimeter wire, and in blue, the resistance of the 0.5 millimeter wire. So obviously, the resistance of the thin wire is larger than that of the thick wire. So this is not a surprise, but we can also see that at least for the thin wire, the orange trace, the resistance value stays flat up to around 500 kilohertz. So this is the 500 kilohertz point, 
after which it starts to slowly increase. Now, this frequency point is close to where the skin depth of copper is equal to half the wire's diameter. And in the case of the thick wire, the same phenomenon should be occurring around 70 kHz, which is just around the minimum measurement frequency of the equipment, so it's not really obvious. Now, the technical explanation behind the phenomenon of skin effect is related to the magnetic fields that the current traveling through the conductor is generating. In an oversimplified formulation, the current repels itself and gets pushed to the outer edge of the conductor. Now, as long as the round conductor exists by itself, the current pattern will be a nice ring. But when the conductor is in close proximity to other conductors, well then current from one conductor will end up interacting with the current from adjacent conductors. Which brings us to proximity effect. So the basic idea behind proximity effect is that based on the direction of the current, the current in the two lines will either be repelled or attracted. So the current will no longer get distributed in a nice ring covering the entire outer perimeter, but rather go in some sort of a croissant shape, an area which will be smaller than the initial skin depth. The closer the conductors are, the stronger this interaction will be. And the main place where you will get to see this phenomenon is in a coil. So here, all of the turns on one side have current going in the same direction, so they are repelling each other, and the current from one side is in opposition to the current from the other side, so it gets attracted. Now, the exact distribution is of course frequency dependent, but the general phenomenon that will be appearing is that the current will pass through less and less of the conductor, greatly increasing its resistance. So in extreme cases, the current will only travel through a very small region of the conductor, on the inner edge of the coil. So finally, it's important to keep in mind that the exact area in which the current will finally travel is dependent on both the frequency of the signal and also the proximity of the conductor to any other conductor. The further apart things are, the smaller the impact of proximity effect will be. So for a given length of wire, the resistance will be smallest when the wire is straight, it increases when the wire is wound into a coil, and the tighter the turns are, the higher the resistance is, with an extreme appearing in multi-layer coils. Now, to perform a measurement that highlights this, the twisted wire sheet won't really work anymore. The coil actually has to keep its shape. So, the other way to reduce the inductance of a wire is to resonate it away. This can be done by adding in a series capacitor. So, for this experiment, I will be using the coil in series with a capacitor and adjusting the value until resonance is reached. I will be using a variable capacitor which I can adjust until I get the desired resonance frequency and the target will be 3 MHz. Now this is not a perfect setup but we will at least be able to make single frequency measurements to determine how the resistance of the wire varies based on the shape of the coil. So I use the same 63 centimeter piece of wire for all of the measurements, I just change the exact shape. So first I put the wire into a single loop on this plastic shape, so this way proximity effect should be as small as possible, then I took the wire off and put it onto a small case and wound it into a single layer coil, and well finally I made an even smaller case and put all of the wire into a multi layer coil. So this shape should have the most obvious case of proximity effect. Now the measurement itself, I ran it from 1 MHz up to 5 MHz, and I adjusted the series capacitance so that in all cases, the resonance, so the point where impedance is minimal, occurs at 3 MHz. Now because of the shun through method, the results left and right of this point will not be all that accurate because of the large impedance value, but that does not really matter. The main thing we are interested in is the resistance at this particular point, so at resonance. Now after some more spreadsheet wizardry, I got the following graph, in which I'm only plotting out the resistance. So in orange we have the resistance of the single turn loop, in blue the resistance of the single layer coil, and in grey the resistance of the multi layer coil. And even though the graph has all sorts of discontinuities occurring on it, the actual point of interest is at 3 MHz, 
So here we can see some very clear resistance differences between the three measurements. So even though I measured the exact same piece of wire in all three cases, the smallest value that I measured was around 650 milliohms for the loop, then for the single layer coil it was around 850 milliohms, and finally for the multi-layer coil the value was around 2.6 ohms. Now these measurements aren't perfect. I did not consider the series resistance of the capacitor, but regardless, we can still observe that the resistance does indeed change based on the exact geometry of the wire. Based on what you do, you can have a larger or smaller value. Knowing that the AC resistance of a conductor is different from the DC resistance is quite an important aspect, especially when building coils. To get the highest possible Q factor, or just to minimize signal losses, you want to keep resistance to a minimum. But it's important to remember that the way to achieve this is not just by using thicker and thicker wires, but also spreading out the turns. High Q factor RF coils commonly have quite a bit of space in between the turns. Now, you will never be able to completely prevent AC resistance, but at least to some extent, you can keep it under control. And with that said, hope you enjoyed this video, and if so, there are more similar videos on my channel that you can check out. And if you want to be up to date with my latest releases, also consider subscribing. So, see you next time. Bye bye.